I'm an older man, and through the grace of God, a born-again uh, believer about half of my life. Although I was raised Catholic and married to the Catholic Church, I lost the wife of my youth here about six years ago after 50-plus years of marriage. She passed away after a, a short bout of, uh, with pneumonia. The first year of uh, being a widower, guys, was very sad and lonely for me. I uh, went through it like going through a fog, and I prayed to God to later for, for later on to help me find a new companion, later on someone who would be a lover and believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, about a year later after my prayers and stuff, he answered my, my prayer. And I remarried about two years, one month after I had become a widower. God has blessed me a second time, and we are very happy. This is my question. Recently, I had a conversation with a uh, relative, and he told me about a friend, and him. Uh, some, they somehow became, uh, the question was asked to me how I was doing, because I hadn't seen this person for a long time. And, um, and this person was a 70-plus-year staunch Catholic. And that person implied, uh, told uh, this relative of mine that, uh, sorry to hear about what had happened to me, but I should be concerned that I should not have remarried again because by doing so, I would be destined for hell. And, of course, I know that's wrong. <laughs> Somebody thinking something like that, you know, uh, uh-huh. I, I, I thought it was so absurd, you know, because common sense tells us that when you marry, you marry until death does your part, and that's what happened to me. And after you, you lose your spouse, God takes your spouse, and then you're free. At a later time, if you want to marry someone, you can Instead of, let's say, living like some people would, you know, shacking up or living together, which is something I would never want to do. I want to do what God would want me to do. I don't care what people really think anymore. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, uh, I was just interested to see, uh, hear your comments about you both, what you have to say about something like this. I was surprised to hear about it. I, I think maybe something like Mormons would probably think something like that, but some Catholics? Uh, I don't think so. Well, and I don't know about that with the Mormons, but I will tell you that we go to heaven because Jesus Christ died on the cross, not because we're married, divorced, single, remarried, period. Um, and uh, Jesus said, all that come to me, I will no eyes cast out. And I believe, again, the condition there is we must come to Christ. But when we come to him and we go, God, I have this issue in my life. I have this, that, or the other thing. I believe that God uh, is grace is greater than, first of all, anything we've done wrong. But I don't think there's anything wrong here that was done. The Catholic Church, of course, uh, forbids their priests to marry. But look at the sexual abuse uh, that the church, uh, the Catholic Church has been charged with over the last 20 years uh, with all things. Because, you know, we were designed by God as sexual creatures unless you are called a celibacy. But if you're not called a celibacy and you're you you want to be with somebody or whatever, this is where the problems come. Nowhere in the Bible does it forbid pastors to be married or anything like that. So they, these are things that have, have been added in. And as I shared yesterday, we want to teach the Bible, not dogmas of any church, because we find that a lot of times the dogmas have something to do with somebody's personal vendetta of whatever it might have been. We don't know. But Jesus said, we live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And there's nothing that would preclude you from being remarried whatsoever. Jeff, your thoughts? No, not at all, William. Uh, That's just a weird thing. You know, you wonder how people come up with this stuff, but they just make it up because right here in 1 Corinthians 7, 39 is the verse that sets you free. And it says, a wife is bound by law as long as her husband lives. But if her husband dies she is at liberty to be married to whom she wishes, only in the Lord. In other words, be sure you marry a Christian. So, and, and the opposite side of the coin is true. A man who is widowed, um, same thing. If, you're, if your spouse passes away, then he says you're at liberty to be married to whom you wish, only be sure that it's in the Lord or a person who loves Jesus. So it's plain and simple. There it is in the word. And why people add these things and put people under bondage and condemnation and unnecessary guilt is really sad. But, you know, as it said on the little uh, set of directions um, in one of my children's toys for Christmas, uh, many years ago, I remember it saying, when all else fails, follow directions. And so when it comes to matters like this, 
you go through the word. What does the word say? Well, that's what it says. So William, not to worry. You didn't sin. You didn't do anything wrong. You're good to go. And this is unfortunate because, again, people get these ideas, notions, either they come up with them themselves, they read it off the Internet, they heard somebody that was supposedly a pastor or a priest or a teacher teaching this stuff, not biblically based. And so, again, this is why we want to read the Bible line by line, precept upon precept. And when we mean by precept, let me explain that. If you're going to look up marriage, for instance, then you want to look at everything in the Bible that pertains to marriage. When Jesus talked about marriage and putting your wife away, this was speaking of a Levitical marriage, not oftentimes what we call today a marriage where Bill marries Fred. See, and this is one of the great problems that we don't really look and we don't exegete the scripture properly. And so if we're going to look at any topic, what does the Bible say on all those particular thoughts and things concerning that topic? And this is how cults are started and different isms are started because they look at only the verses that support their ideas and disregard everything else. We can't do that when we teach line upon line, precept upon precept, and we read it that very same way. Hope that helps, William. Oh, yes, it does. It just reinforces what I thought all along. It's just that I was, um, uh, how could I say, I couldn't believe how somebody, how even one of them was, could possibly think something like that. I mean, you know, an adult. But uh, God bless them. Uh, maybe this is one way by somebody else hearing something like this that they can uh, better understand that, um, you know, the, the grace that God gives us, 